show you this first you guys know this is my list right here of hedge funds not my list it's a list i found of distressed credit hedge funds okay and that's what they are distressed deb hedge funds is what they call them um as you can see these are all the shorters guys and if you type in a name you're going to find the one you're looking for you're going to find citadel sure i just want to make sure you guys can see everything i'm doing okay cool so find citadel you'll find apollo right it's all there um as i go down and I was going through this, I went ahead and did this way. I typed in Thomas H. Lee, and there he is. He's definitely there, and he's a bad guy, right? So I started looking around, and I started putting things together. And so I go into his damn uh, Wikipedia, which I was reading, and I read up on him, and I saw that he was connected with some really bad people. Remember the Rothschild? Remember I was talking about that? His brother is connected with that. His whole family. Then I saw the Drexel, Burnham, Lambert, and how that all went down with Michael Mikan. Um, I literally was reading this, but this is the problem. This is what was getting me. It said, Kroberg, Kohlberg, Kravis, and Roberts and company. That transaction made him a billionaire. And I was like, okay. This group, this KKR, is who he's working with. They are partners. They're in everything together. KKR. Okay, guys? I'm going to close it out. I'm going to get to the next article, and we're going to go down the list. And, guys, this is why. This is why I feel we're invested in the right things. Okay? I'll just give you an example. Like, KKR, here we go. This little person, I have no idea who this is. She used to be for Citadel. Okay, so before she worked for KKR, who is partners with THL, remember this, guys, prior to joining KKR, senior communications for Citadel Hedge Fund Securities. So KKR, just so we're all clear, is partners with Bain Capital as well. I'm going to show you that. Uh, I believe THL and KKR and Bain all had a hand in Toys R Us, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll keep going. I want to see if this article is going to load. It does. So Citadel boss Ken Griffin urges Mayor Eric Adams, who cares what he's doing, but look at where he's doing it from. And you see right here, Citadel boss, he spoke with the importance of public safety, blah, 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 with the 60 people, including Adams, KKR and company co-founder, Harris and, and whoever, and then the Wells Fargo CEO. So Henry Kravis. So he's at a, at a conference speaking and KKR is there. I mean, why would you be there, right? Remember, KKR and the guy who just killed himself are partners. Partners till the day they die. As I looked at this, who owns KKR? Well, of course, $200 million with the KKR is owned by Citadel. And when they increased their position this past um, 13F, 265%, the most of anyone in the top 10 other than this damn nonsense here by Wolverine Trading, they finally bought in. But these guys increased their position huge. They do have some type of... Um, leverage as i would call it so here you go again here's the co-chairman and ceo of kkr he's a fireside chat with ken griffin so do you understand how close all these guys are i hope you guys know how close kkr is to the guy who just killed himself and citadel so let's go for this guy suny vishal sani or whatever his name is Join KKR Plasma, KKR, whatever. And where did he work before? Well, Surveyor Capital, which is, we know, Citadel Group. Okay? So he worked for Citadel, and now he's at KKR. Now we go down this one, Eric Brady. Uh, Brady he's a senior associate at Citadel. Where did he work before? KKR. So there you guys go. Let's see if I know any other ones before that. The reasons why I tell you these guys' names and, and where they work and what they do is because I want you guys to have a good understanding um, of like recognizing names when you can recognize a name it hits you and you're like oh wait a minute that's a bad guy I shouldn't be there things like that Thomas H. Lee partners in a sentence like what do they do well of course uh, they were partnered up with Blackstone the Carlisle Group Harmon and KKR right here um, that's what they do guys they're all partnered together this is a group of misfits if you look down here party I believe that's the name Party successfully led fundraising and some of the industry's biggest name, including KKR, Bank Capital. Look at this, Silver Lake. And Silver Lake's just as bad as all of them, guys. And that's why when you're looking at uh, you, AMC, you guys should be worried too that they borrowed money from Silver Lake at any point. And I know Silver Lake's out now, 
but that's because they made their billion dollars off the deal as well. Um, and that's all retail money, man. It's not your money. Uh, here's another one. KKR buys 1-800 contracts from a AEA, but guess what that is? That is um, Thomas Lee. So KKR agreed to acquire 1-800 contacts from Thomas H. Lee. They're partners, guys. They do this. They bought them for $900 million. Um, phenomenal. Phenomenal for them to be shoveling money back and forth to each other. And I read all these articles, and I, and I tell you, it, shock, it doesn't shock me anymore. But whenever I do read something that shocks me, that floors me, I show it to you guys. And I'll show it to you in a minute because something here did floor me. Um, KKR and other big hedge funds, they take a swing at the Dodgers. So KKR, Thomas Lee Partners, um, Highbridge, and now we know Highbridge Capital is one that um, Citadel is invested in as well. Uh, they all bid to buy the Dodgers. I don't think they won because I think the other guy has the Dodgers now. Um, so what my point is, what I'm showing you guys is all these guys are connected enough to do billion dollar acquisitions together. Okay, in 2006, a private equity firm KKR, they um, they acquired a media company from who? From Bank Capital, from Thomas H. Lee Partners, for 3.9 billion dollars. There's a deal between the two. So are they connected? And the reason why I'm showing you all the connections, and we're gonna get there, I promise you. And look, even this one here, the Kyle Group KKR and Thomas H. Lee purchased Nelson in 2006. And they did this, and they posted revenues of $894 million, whatever it may be, but they bought $15 billion buyout is what you're looking at. And these are deals that these guys are doing together. And now all the intricate details of these deals, guys, I'm sure there's a guys just like Laser Haas in part of all of these deals, right? Like, they, I know it exists. I mean, there's probably crime everywhere on the markets, but I'm connecting it to GameStop for a reason. Because, one... I'm invested in GameStop too. You're invested in GameStop. But if you want to learn more about this stuff, you guys can dig a little deeper. Here's Tom J. Lee. He doubles down on payout for laid off art van workers. Okay. And now when they did this, why it matters, it shows how the Toys R Us settlement set something of precedent. Now, everything they're doing is based off the fact that they bought out a retail company called Van, um, whatever this was called right now van uh or art van there we go they bought all this out and they come in and they do what they call a leverage buyout and that's exactly what they're known for they're known for putting pressure on covenants pressure on the loans themselves on the bonds and forcing you into a position and the playbook for this is to one get your company to overextend themselves on debt. That's the first thing that happens. These are all red flags, guys. When you expand too much for no reason at all, when you just use all the capital and all you cash burn everything, when you overextend, that's when you're exposed. And they do this on purpose. They open the door for these guys to come in, and these are the guys coming in. And there's a handful of them, guys. But, but if you look, every article has them together, main capital, KKR, and you're going to have THL. So the fact that, that Thomas H. Lee killed himself yesterday, it would be the equivalent of, the equivalent of like Ken Griffin killing himself. Guys, it would be like front page news, or you would think, but it says it's back page on a, you know on page six or whatever it may be. Now, how that art went from re retail juggernaut to an open house fire, and you can see it. Thomas A. Lee said an aggressive strategy to open 200 more stores and double its revenue, two billion by 2020. Well, you can't do it that way. You just can't go in, and why? Because you're gonna be you're gonna be over. It's just too hard, guys. The, the amount of debt that you take in. I'll give you the example, and I always do this, pack and pay. If you guys remember this company back in the 80s and 90s that I've studied, pack and pay was opening one store a day. And you can't do that. You just can't because then there's no sense of culture. Who are you hiring? You're going to hire who exactly? Who are you going to mentor? Who are you going to grow? You can't. You can't train your culture to this many people that fast. It'll be burned out, and it'll never happen that way. So when you look at all the finger pointing that's going to happen, these guys had missteps that fuel uh, needed to burn down the house. So they, they added the fuel to burn down the house, sure, but they did it on purpose. And then I have to go look at, well, who used to own Art Van Eslander, the, the family themselves? Who had, a, who had a, a put on it? Who had short it? Like, you got to ask yourself all these questions. But... What you don't have to ask is too much, and here's why. This is what they did. They bought into this company, okay? THL bought into Arvan, 
All right, I'm gonna give you an example. Now, this is all the crime that people want to talk about. I don't need to go into conspiracy theories. I don't need to go into any of that. Just read the facts, okay? They bought in on an estimated deal of $550 million. But go down here and you're gonna see exactly what happened. Thomas Lee had blind spots. They had a complete disregard for Warren, Michigan, whatever that means, and an ability to attract top talent. They were in the belief that if they weren't Ivy League talent and vetted by the BCG or KPMG, you couldn't possibly be capable of growing a company. They were getting the ideas of, hey, we need to be Boston Clearing Group. We need to do it this way. And guys, trust me, these are the same individuals that were embedded in GameStop. And if you don't believe it, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you everything because you guys need to know the history of what we're fighting. And then in addition to that, you need to know why they doubled down or why they had a three, a 226 short percent on GameStop. Then you'll know. They carry a $178 million debt with FS KKR Capital Corp. They actually, KKR had the debt. They owned the debt on this company. That was the problem. John, whatever this guy's name is, Thomas J. whatever Lee, Thomas H. Lee, I apologize. THL came in and bought this company, and who owned the debt? KKR. Who are they partners with? Who are they doing all the deals with? That's the problem here. Um, they're, they're helping each other out. So I just want you to know that. Um, we'll go to the next one. Clear Capital, here you go. If you look here, the nation's largest radio station, which was acquired in 2006 by Bank Capital and TH Lee Partners for $27 billion. They're partners. This guy who killed himself partnered with Bank Capital for $27 billion on a deal for iHeartRadio. Um, guys, it, and it doesn't stop there. You have another $175 million investment facility from KKR, and you go in here and you read, and it's just like, they're just borrowing money, or they're just acquiring things. And who are they in credit with? Look at this. KKR joins institutional backers, which include BlackRock, HIG Capital, and THL Credit. Thomas H. Lee Credit. They're all together. Tell me who's dying when this happens. I even had to go into this one with Gay Plotkin. So Melvin Capital doubles down on Cotty stock. I don't even know what the hell that is. But who are the Gay Plotkin? Because I don't I can't get past the paywall. But what do they do? They're in private equity with KKR and company unwinded stake position. So they actually are partnered up as well. Gay Plotkin and Melvin Capital. Those names are familiar. I know. I'm going to read the chat later, guys, but here's the GameStop corporate information page. These are the executive officers for GameStop at the time. These are the board of directors at the time. This is before Ryan Cohen, Alan Adel, and Larry Chang, um, Yang Zhao, and, and uh, Jim Grubble pushed everybody out. Who was in the damn company? Right here. Bill Simon. William Simon, senior advisor, KKR and company. Now do you know why? Now, you know what I tell you that they had to deal with BCG and they shouldn't have done it Why they were trying to get out of there. Guys, the good guys got in right here. This, these two good guys got in. Uh, some more good guys got in. But let me tell you guys, it was hard to push out these guys. It was hard to push them out. But you can leverage it with how much do you own, what really makes sense. And Bill, Bill, uh, Bill Simon found out that he lost his ass on the short position that was GameStop. But yes, we, we were infiltrated with GameStop, um, with uh, bad guys. KKR is a bad group of guys. Here he is, Bill Simon. A seasoned executive with more than 30 years operational strategic advisory experience in the retail, consumer, and food and beverage industries. Since 2014, he has served as senior advisor at KKR. So why the hell would we be partnered up with him if we know that they bring you in just to overextend you, cut you, gut you, and have someone else come buy you out? That's what happened. That's what happened when Silver Lake allowed AMC to get gutted and stretched all the way through. Melvin, Cap not Melvin Capital, but Mudrick comes in, and then after Mudrick leaves, comes and goes, and they finesse more money out of them. At, you know, at, obviously at HYMC. Now you have somebody like Antura, who's been there the whole time, finally come down and double down on their bet, and now they're making money. Guys, it's rinse and repeat for these guys. This leverage buyout of private equity, I tell you, I wasn't fearful of it when I first started. I didn't even care. I wasn't even getting involved. And then I go out and I, re I met up with the badass trader in one tweet, in one, tr in one live chat. I was on the phone. I forget who I was talking to at the time. And he's like, Marantz, ask about private equity. Ask about private equity, about leverage buyouts. And I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, what does it matter? 
I, get it. I, I own the stock. Because then you come here and you go like this. Who's burning the capital? Look at this. Bank Capital, the Boston Consulting Group and Bank Capital and Company, they're known as the big three management uh, consultants. Now, as you look... And look at, this is all bank capital. This is when they were founded. This is what they acquired over time. Everything you see. Well, then you also have Silver Lake. Silver Lake's the same way. They've acquired things, stretched people out the whole way. And they have a whole track record here. These are called the leverage buyouts. And this is how they do it, guys. A leverage buyout is when a purchasing company using borrowed money by another company, thus allowing for an advantage for larger companies to be acquired with less, with less personal assets. They're buying you with borrowed money. That's the difference, guys. It's not their own money. And they are all partners together. So this is in that think tank, right? The FWFB think tank. Um, that's the Friends with Financial Benefits. This think tank, you know who led me here? Our guy, um, Running with Bears. I believe that's his name. So he led me to this think tank. I go and Google up some stuff in there. I find what I find. And GameStop wasn't going to be permanently closed. GameStop was groomed to be acquired. It had acqu it accumulated a lot of debt first. That's how it works, man. That's how it works, guys. First, they get you overextended, and then they acquire you. And you have no position but to do it that way. Go ask AMC. It's happening right now. Next. All right. Uh, that one's not loading. We'll go to this one. KKR raises $1.2 billion in new SPAC plans. The problem I have with SPACs, okay, and that's the special proposition acquisition, whatever the hell it is, right? I don't remember what it all stands for. Um, I'm supposed to know this stuff, but be in my brain for a minute. Now, with the SPAC, okay, I feel, this is how I feel. I feel they're hiding money in SPACs. Because of what I've learned, because of what I've been reading as far as Citadel putting money into companies, okay? Um, I'm sorry, I was getting a message, guys. My bad. Let me go see what this is. I'm, I'm, I'm mid-thought, but I'm with you guys, okay? I feel like they're hiding money into the SPACs themselves, okay? And I'll prove it to you, and I'll show it to you. So, oh, we're good there. Okay, so here we go. So they go ahead and KKR rises. Um, they raise $1.2 billion in new SPAC with plans to merge with a uh, consumer retail company. Sure, look at the date, March 17th, 2021. Why do I show you that? Because what happened in 2021, guys? As you had all these SPACs, and these are the, the um, special purpose acquisition company, right? Uh, SPAC in itself is, is crazy that they're hiding this money in it, okay? And I'm gonna explain it to you. So they come in, they don't have that many SPACs coming out, guys. When you look at the US listed SPAC IPOs for 2019, it was only 59. For 2020, 247. But it just so happens the year that they're over leveraged on shorts, the year that everybody's getting exposed, the year that we're over here buying shares of GameStop, they opened up 612 SPACs. Since that day in that time frame, have they opened up any more? Barely 83 this year, last year. So a thousand over the last five, four years, there's unheard of before that, but they found a way to put money on the market and let it sit there and take it from retail. Every SPAC that I have seen with the exception of like five, but I'm talking about the 612 have gone down below $10. They all start out at $10 a share. That means they're sucking money out of retail. Go ask, go talk to 23andMe, go talk to uncle Bruce and all his failed SPACs. I'm there, and I want you guys to know that. But they're raising SPACs the year that they're under, that they're over-leveraged themselves on the short, and now they're making money hand over fist. I mean, have you ever seen this much money in your life for distressed credit investors? I never have. But just know, 600 SPACs in 2021 compared to less than 100 this year, or last year, and less than 50 the year before, two years before. There's something going on in 2021. You tell me what it was, because I can tell you. Now, here you go. The CLO market roundup. AMC Entertainment lenders hire restructuring advisors. So, AMC Entertainment. Do you think that's AMCX? Or do you think that's AMC? I have a hard time understanding the way these guys write things, but I'm pretty sure this is AMC, the movie theater. Okay? Um... You guys got to know that I started looking into AMCX and who was over leveraged over there because that was the original play. That was what it was supposed to be. But when I look up here, the restructuring advisors themselves, 
they're hiring the law firm of Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, whatever the hell this is, right here. So these guys are being hired to go ahead and restructure. And I'm always leery of what bank they're using and who they're using to do it. So I'm paying attention to that to that um, that that attorney. And from what they're telling me is they're they're not the same attorneys that were the Platons in this one. Citadel suing for payment order flow back in 2011, 2006. I'm still reading things. This is a case that I still haven't gone through. Um, <clears throat> Gibson Dunn Advisors. Uh, they're here for the acquisition of whatever. But right here. They advise on the behalf of Apollo Management. So it's, I'm really scared for anyone who's getting involved with certain law firms, but uh, Gibson Dunn and Crutcher, um, I believe that's right. They are involved with Apollo, okay? Now, how does this all connect, guys? How is it they all are helping each other out? Another one right here. The same law firm, okay, Gibson Dunn's finance. Is this somebody else? Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, same thing. Look who their key clients are. KKR, Bank Capital, and Chevron. Maybe they all just have enough money to, to afford a really good law firm, like Kirkland and Ellis. And then think about it. Bank Capital and, he, and um, Hellman and Friedman, for $17 billion, they purchased some company. Okay? And then is that Aetna Help? I don't even know what that is. Aetna or Athena Help? Health? On Monday, an agreement in um, shaped by law firms, Milbank, Kirkland and Ellis, Gibson, Dunn, and whoever. So bank, and whenever I see bank capital, I get excited, bro. All right, here we guys go. Another guy. He is um, working, and he works for the law firms. Okay, he began his career practicing attorney for Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, whatever the hell the name is. He also is consultant in bank capital. <laughs> Bain and Company. Um, Bain Capital. Oh, here's a good one right here. Bain Capital uh, to buy Apex Tool for $1.6 billion. When Bain Capital agrees to buy uh, on Stanley from Black & Deck or whatever, they agree to buy this, the competitor of them, right? They come in and they do the deal, and I'm reading, I'm reading, and it says the deal is the latest for Bain Capital, who's partnered up with Mitt Romney. Uh, obviously, he's the creator of that. And Goldman Sachs and law firm Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher advised Apex tool deal, while Barclays, Royal Bank of Canada Capital, and the law firm Kirkland and Ellis advised Bain Capital. So now they're all together, right? I mean, it's Kirkland and Ellis and Bain, and it's Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, and uh, helping out Goldman Sachs. They're all here to do the deal together, all here to make money together. Now, my man, my lawyer on the staff here, my guy, uh, you guys know we have one. He tells me, Marantz, don't look too much into the, the law firms because everybody's going to hire the best attorneys. And some of these attorneys are just widely known. Like this one right here, that is Kirkland and Ellis that partnered up. They have two equity partners here. And they hired uh, Kirkland and Ellis. And when I keep reading, I found out it was those guys again. But I'm still reading about the whole here. Cinemark Holdings, uh, Bank Capital, Madison Deerporn Partners, TGP Capital. That's the Texas, um, those, that Texas group. I'm still reading stuff, guys. I'm still going through things. But when I'm late at night and I'm working like this, and then a guy calls me and tells me that the guy who killed himself from THL is the reason why it all went down. Now, look at this. This guy from THL, who's the managing director and head of communications, uh, he oversees the THL marketing communications. And what did I tell you guys? What did I tell you these guys come from? Before joining THL, Josh held communications leadership positions at Citadel Securities. I can't make it up. Avoid KKR, avoid THL. Sorry that this guy killed himself, but it should be bigger news than what it is. I definitely agree with that. Do I think it has anything to do with Mattel and Toy, whatever the hell um, our guy Laser saying? It could, it could, but it's not going to be the path I go down. Is that fair? I hope. But um, I, you know, I promote his uh, information on the page, on the channel. Just know with GameStop, GameStop was partnered up with KKR on the board. That means the bad guys planted a guy on the board. Explain it. Explain it other than the fact that they were trying to get GameStop to overextend themselves, to buy more, do more. And Ryan Cohen came in and was the activist and saved this company. And you guys want to call it retail saving it? Uh, you guys can do whatever you want, but it takes the first guy to take the first step. I'll take the second step. I'll buy the company and I'll hold it and I'll put out the right information. But believe it, guys, they were going to get gutted from the inside out and it didn't happen. 
because it was the right people and the right leadership, the right five guys on the board, and they got rid of those seven D-bags. You guys can do it however you want, okay? But go look at AMC and go look at Bed Bath & Beyond and then tell me who's on the boards. Break it down for me because I have, and I'm telling you, there's some bad seeds in there. They're costing you money, and they're going to keep costing you money. So invest how you guys want to invest. Invest for a chart invest for a short squeeze or invest for value. I'll go with the value investment because that's the one that's gonna make me money over the long term. These other ones are gambles and I'm not gonna gamble my life savings. I'm not gonna gamble my expendable income. I'm not gonna gamble a dollar. I don't buy lottery tickets. I buy for sure things. Welcome back. Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. And for those of you saying, Laser Haas, I have this for you. For you saying in the circle of trust, okay? Everybody in the circle of trust, but nobody's in my corner. Just remember, a circle of trust has no corners. Remember that. I don't need 